right, guys. I'm going to give it a second to see if some others will hopefully hop on. But um, to give you a little bit of an update, if you were with me last month, I wanted to let you know what I thought were the butterflies. Yeah, they weren't butterflies. They were my brain talking like at a thousand miles a minute. I'm talking like Star Wars uh, light speed. Like say this, mention that. But then my mouth is over here, like, you know, crushed from Nemo, going like, dude. So uh, after we hung up, the three of us got together and we talked. So we should be good moving forward. So it seems like others have joined, so I think we can get started. Hey, Patricia. Um, hi, guys. If we haven't met before, my name, hey, what's going on, girlfriend? Um, if we haven't met before, my name is Chelsea Montero, and I have a little side gig called Montero Manor. And tonight I'm going to show you a finish which is kind of old world, grungy, milk paint, kind of tear, you know, pull at your heartstrings type of finish. So, um, before we get started, I have two questions for you. Number one, do you like, hey Jamie, do you keep picture frames. Um, if you can't tell from like behind me, I love picture frames. All kinds, all styles, all colors. Um, you know, I love gallery walls. I have numerous ones in my house and whether it's pictures, artwork, or sentimental items, I love to showcase them. And um, if like me and you like picture frames, especially good picture frames, you know they cost an arm and a leg. And the really good ones, they might cost like a kidney on the black market. They're so nice. Um, so my second question is, do you keep sentimental items like birthday cards, um, holiday cards, uh, handwritten notes, uh, hand-me-down recipes, even your kids' um, masterpieces from school? I keep those too because those things I like to put in my frames and put on my walls. So um, that's kind of like where we are tonight and how I got to where I am and what I'm going to show you. So tonight I might kind of go forward to go backward to kind of show you how I did this. So if I jump around, just kind of bear with me. I promise you there's a, you know, reason to my madness. So, um, Recently, I went looking for something, and I came across a sentimental item. Um, it was a letter from my mom. Give me a second. Um, that I put away. And this letter is very special to me. Um, it's a handwritten note. And, you know, so, you know, sentimental things you put away, you store, you know, in your drawers, because you don't want anything to happen to them. So when I pull this... Uh, letter out from time to time, it gives me this mental boost. It gives me this feeling of love and peace and being totally honest. Days when my panties get a little bit too twisted, this letter proves that I can keep going and I can uh, get through certain things. So um, with that, oh, sorry, um, so, like, to give you a little bit more of a backstory, my mom, um, my parents divorced when I was, was young, and I'm an only child. I am, um, I am married to a wonderful man, and if he is watching, I love you, babe. Um, we have three great kids. Uh, we will, my husband and I will be married uh, in May for 25 years. Our kids range from 23 to 17. And um, my mom has lived with us uh, forever. Like I said, I'm an only child. My mom was my first best friend. Um, she was that sister I didn't have that I fought with like no tomorrow. Uh, she was the kid, I mean the babysitter that my kids only knew. Uh, this woman was a rock star. And uh, my mom came down with pancreatic cancer in 2018, and she fought a she fought a very tough fight, 
um, one that would put Muhammad Ali to shame. She fought so hard. And, um, I'm sorry. Um, this letter. So, um, my mom went, she went through all the chemo, the radiation. She had the major, uh, surgery. And for six months, she was cancer free. However, her cancer came back and my mom passed away in uh, December of 2020, you know, a week before Christmas. So as you can figure out, it was kind of hard for me and for my family. And uh, so as the days went on after my mom passed away, you know, I started to clean up some of her things, you know, clothes that I wanted to donate, um, things that I wanted to keep, you know, like that. So one day I'm going through her desk and I come across this letter. And it's not really a letter, it's more so a, um, a rough draft of a letter that she was writing. So when her cancer came back, she wrote, um, she asked me when I went to, because you know it's COVID, wonderful COVID, I would go to the store for her. And she was like, hey, when you go to the store, get me two thank you cards. And I'm like, what do you want thank you cards for? And she's like, oh, she wanted to send them to her oncologist, you know, et cetera. I was like, okay. So I went and I got them. And when she was done with them, she sealed them. And she's like, hey, can you put these out in the mailbox for me? Okay. I never knew anything about them until the day I found this letter. So I'm at her desk and I'm cleaning up her stuff. And I see this scratch paper. And it is her um, rough draft of what she wanted to write in these thank you cards to her doctors. So with that, I started to read it, and this is where I'm kind of going to go forward to go backwards. I'm going to share this with you, and then maybe you'll kind of get my thinking. So this is, I'm sorry for the glare. I know the light's probably, but I'll turn it up. So this here is my mom's handwritten letter. And I'll read it to you so you can see why I am the way I am. And I might skip a part because it's kind of personal, but don't get it. So this is, the, you know, the note that went to one of the oncologists, and she wrote, I wanted to send a thank you note to you for all the kindness, support, and assistance you have given to my family. This mess my body has gone through and seems to continue to go through has been a very, has been very heavy ordeal for my daughter and her family. Okay, this part I have to kind of skip. Um, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, but she says, but she, meaning me, uh, was my idea. Um, I will have to, I will say it, it was definitely the best idea I ever had. She is my rock. Thank you for all of the assistance you have given her. You and Dr. Laheru will always be in my thoughts and prayers. Again, thank you. So you might be thinking, like, what the heck, what are you talking about? Well, my mom writes that I was the best idea she ever had, and I'm her rock. So for somebody to go who went through cancer and fought a, a fight that you watched and you were just in awe of their um, strength when they had none, for them to say you are their rock, this, this does it, this did it for me. So, when I pulled this letter out the other day, forgive me, we'll get back to the funny jokes. Um, when I pulled this out, I was like, why the heck do I keep putting this away? I need to, I need to put this out. I need to put this in a frame. I need to set it up on one of my, plan uh, one of my um, desks, my home office. So, when I have a bad day at work and I see this, I know that's, this is just small stuff. I'm a rock. I can get through this. So, with that, I wanted to show you what I did and how I got to where I am. So, here we go. All right, so, remember how I said I kept picture frames? Do you see this frame? This frame with Nemo used to be in my kid's bathroom. And remember how I mentioned Crush before? Crush was in this frame. So, as you can see, they are the exact same frame. So, when I saw this frame, I thought, oh, this is the perfect frame. It's... Um, Great lines, it, you know, it's solid. It's the perfect um, start to, to create something. So with that, I'm going to show you this little milk paint finish I did. 
So um, I'm going to turn this down and I'm going to show you what I did. Um, so if you can bear with me. Now, if you know anything about me, you know, or maybe if you don't, I am a lover of everything old. Old houses, old finishes, you name it. I love it. Um, the older, the better. But maybe not so the wrinkles on my face because I don't love them. Um, so I thought this would be the perfect thing, you know, for to do. So I'm going to show you. Now, you have to remember, these are just sample boards. I will definitely show you. I will pull this out just so you can kind of see how I got to write it. Um, we, I used a lot of products. And this was one of those times that when you kind of start something, you have an idea, but things kind of progress and change, or you add or you subtract something. This is one of those. So um, to start, if you remember, my frame was a solid white frame. So what I did is I went through and I painted my whole frame with one step, Java. This is a great color. I wanted to like have a wood, but I wasn't sure what type of wood, um, if I was gonna go like a darker brown. I was gonna start with brown derby, but then um, I kind of wanted more of an old world, you know, kind of wash look. So I went with Java. And as you can see, I went with, and I just painted my whole frame um, with one step. After this dries, I then went and I put on some stain. And as you can see, I wasn't, it wasn't like a full coverage. Like here I used a, a synthetic brush, so I didn't really have any lines, but I wasn't worried about having um, lines because I wanted to create texture and I wanted to create movement. So when I came through, I then went and used um, the Antique Pine Gel Stain and I took a uh, chippy brush, you know, to create some lines to, you know, to create movement. And so once these both fully dried, I then went on to my next step. Now, I wanted to have, I wanted some um, texture and I didn't know what I wanted to do. First, you know, I, I was going to use gesso, but because I was using milk paint. However, gesso sometimes cracks, as you know, it cracks, and I didn't really want this to like crack. I didn't want pieces to fall off. I, I, just, I just wanted the texture. So I thought, why not use plaster? Because then I know I could get, you know, the ridges, the bumps, you know, the rough edges, and um, I knew that it, you know, it would, it would stay. So with that, after, my um, stain was completely dry. I came back and I put, as you can see, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to do the um, plaster. But as you can see, I didn't, I just wanted to create texture. I didn't, there was no rhyme or reason how I put this on. It was just, I just went with the flow. So here is the Venetian plaster. I love this stuff. It has, um, it has a lifetime on the shelf and if you uh, mix it up in a solid in the um, sealed container it will also last a long time so this is like what I used to make um, for for my frame so I did this what last week but I wanted to show you and I just stored it in a cool whip bowl but look it's still can you see without the light look it's still it's ready to go so I'm going to use this for my um, for our project, but I wanted to show you how to mix, how I mixed it up. Now, obviously, you can um, all you need is water. So depending on what the finish you are doing. Now I am not going with um, you know you can like burnish this with you know your trowels and your and your steel, but um, I am, for this project, all I used was one of my painting knives. And with this, I just went through, and I just wanted to get this to a clay-like consistency. So if you can see, I just put a little bit of water, and usually, 
I don't go this way. I usually go this way to start up. I just get it to that all the powder is mixed in with the water. And I get this texture consistency. So with that, I then, like I said, like the, after everything dried, I came in with one of my painting knives and I just took and I just started to put it on haphazardly. Some areas I left a little more. Some areas, you know, I thinned out. And then I will tell you this, like, like when I got into the corners, I, I did, I was a little bit heavier um, with my application. So with this, well, with anything really, if you can, I really want to make sure, because I'm heavy handed, I want to make sure that everything is completely dry. So roughly everything stayed, I let everything dry overnight. Now you can usually, you know, take a heat gun, you can take, um, a hair dryer, whatever you have to like to, to dry things down. But um, like I said, I'm heavy handed. And if we get into any of these pockets where, you know, we have a good amount of um, product, I need to make sure that in, inside and down underneath that this is totally dry. So I let it sit overnight. And let me tell you, it works on my patience because I am not one for patience. So this is what I did, and I let this, this has actually been dry for a while. So um, if you can hear, it's rather rough. And if the lighting, you can see with my lighting, you know, there are, there's ridges, there's textures. This is it completely dry. This is what it looks like. It's not coming off. So when I got to this point, I thought, you know, what do I want to do? You know, I want the texture. I want some of you know, the grain, I want some of the chunks, but I need to smooth it down because I didn't want, you know, I did want my, my frame to look nice. So what I did is at the same time of using one of my knives, I also went and I used two types of um, steel wool. Now, um, I have like the number four, which is the really hard, this one is like really abrasive, and I suggest if you ever use these, <clears throat> excuse me, you wear gloves because this can cut into your hands. But then when I was finished, I used the almighty, you know, for people smooth um, steel bolt. So with that, I'm going to show you how I got to my texture. So with this, if I had some chunks, I kind of. You know what, we're going to do this. I went through and, you know, I scraped like some of this. Oh, and if you do this, make sure you do it in a um, well-ventilated room outside if you can. Um, if not, make sure you uh, wear a mask. So with this, I just kind of went through... You know, and I'm just I kind of scraped some of the texture off. You know, if you ever watched that, isn't there a lady on um, shoot on YouTube or something? And she, she's anal. What is it that? Uh, I don't know. Forget what I was saying. Anyway. So as you can see, I scraped some of this off. It's still there. However, I'm not quite happy. I still want a little bit more. So with that, um, I'm going to use my number four steel wool. And now, um, two things. One, just remember, but this isn't sealed. So if you take too much off, you can always put more back on. Um, so just kind of, if you know what you want, great, but just try to go not so heavy handed because there are sometimes that if you get a certain part, 
you know, it is plaster. If you do hit it, you could take a chunk out. And you were like, well, shoot, I, you know, I didn't want a hole here. I wanted, you know, I wanted some coverage. But then at the same time, you might be like, oh, isn't that cool? I like that, you know, the market left. So with that, I went through and I kind of just gently, because as you can see, using this, can you see how it, it does pull it off? So again, just, just lightly go over it. Because if you do do it too hard, it will go through, it'll go down to your paint, and it will go down into your, um, into your wood. So as you can see, I just went through, and as you, as you can also see, it does come off. So make sure you're in a uh, well-ventilated area. So then I just came through, and I wanted to smooth this out. I wanted to burnish the plaster a little bit before I put my milk paint on because the plaster is porous and we're gonna go and we're gonna put milk paint on top, it's gonna seep into the plaster. So we wanna make sure, you know, we have those nooks, we have those crannies, but then at the same time when we're done, we wanna make sure that we come back <coughs> And clean it off. I don't, I do have a, just use a dry rag. You really don't want to use a uh, wet rag because it's not sealed. You will start to pull some of the plaster off. So once you get that off, uh, we are then ready to go with our milk paint. So getting to this, so here it is. And with my frame, you're gonna notice that I have multiple layers. And with this, you can, sometimes when you have um, features like this, you have to kind of dissect. You can think to yourself, you know, what's my top layer? What's the bottom layer? What's in between? I will tell you, um, doing Amy's old world course, it did help me get that understanding of di dissecting layers, which Amy, if you listen, good job. Um, so with this, what I did, as you can see, I use multiple layers. You can see some black, you can see maybe like some white, you can see some champagne yellow. So with that, I wanted to create layers. And I used three types of milk paint. I used champagne yellow. I used Sunday suppers. And I used Noir. Now, because I wanted like a true black, and remember I said before, like I really wanted I wasn't sure like if I wanted a dark wood. I also use, if you guys haven't tried, or um, if you have them, I know you can probably speak with me. Amy's um, pigments, these things are fantastic. If you um, add them to any of your colors, they will, it's strictly just the pigment. It's not milk paint. It will add that boost of color that you need. So with that, I'm gonna show you, um, the colors that I did, and we'll put them on, and then we'll go to the next step because I did it and it's already dry. So, um, the colors, and we're gonna hold on to that. So first, um, I knew definitely that I wanted to use black for the um, kind of like the main focal point, um, but I wanted like a rich black. Like I mentioned before, I love everything old and I love um, like primitive types of furniture and paintings. So I wanted that patina type of a black. So can you see this? This is strictly just black pigment and you can see the difference between like the nor and the black. So I wanted to give this nor a pop and you only, now here's the whole thing. This is less is more. You'll just put a little bit in 
and you stir it up, then you mix it together. You don't want to see any of like the black, and you will see like the milk paint get the nor get darker. So I did this with my nor milk paint. So we have this one. Um, then so my champagne yellow, I just left champagne yellow. So um, this one was pretty simple. And roll of thumb, always remember if you are doing, doesn't really matter what type of piece you're doing, big or small, always make sure that you mix enough color, especially if you're adding pigments, because if you go back, um, usually nine times out of 10, it doesn't come out the exact same color, even if you do the measurements. So always remember to make more. So with my Sunday suppers, I went, and we're just gonna make a little bit, obviously, because our sample isn't that big. Oh, and if anybody from Amy and Howard at home is watching, you know what would be great? Zippers, instead of like these, because zippers would be great. All right, so for my Sunday suppers, I wanted this to be a little bit of a darker brown. So with this, I'm going to use the pigment Phoenician Brown. So, can you see this? This is a great earth, um, earth tone, a great warm brown, and I thought this would be like the perfect accent for this Sunday suppers. So once again, oh, and just so you know, So you can see like the pigment mixed in dry form with the powder. So again, just mix them up until um, they are now one uniform color. I'll put water in so you can see and, and like we'll do this, but you can see it comes out a little bit darker. All right, three spoons, three colors. We need our water. So, um, okay, so when it comes to milk paint, obviously, um, you can use a binder. I am not using a binder with this because the part, our next step, I want to be able to pull this off. We are going to, um, we are going to channel our Ralph Macchio Karate Kid. Um, what is his name? Oh my God. I'm having the biggest brain fart. Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wait, wax off, paint on, paint off. That's what we're going to do. So with that, another case in point, always make sure that you make more because of if you go and you pull too much off, you have enough left over that you can go back and add um, more to spots that you're unhappy with. So as you can see, I don't really want this too runny. I want this a little bit thicker. Um, I am mixing it up pretty well. However, you know how like when you do milk paint, you don't want to paint with the bubbles. You don't want to paint with... Um, the grains, you wanna make sure that you have it mixed together. However, this time, if I have some grain, that's okay, because remember, I'm looking for texture. And I will show you in um, the dry part so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm kind of, I guess, with all of this, I'm kind of going against the rule of what to do. But that's art, right? You do what makes you happy. You do, you create a finish that you love and you're going to be proud of. So again, I'm just mixing these up. Not too much water because I don't want it too runny. I want, and if I have a little bit of the powder, I don't want a lot. I don't want you to think, what the heck is she talking about? I promise you, there's a method to my madness. So you can probably see better with this um, champagne yellow. This is actually a really pretty color. And um, when I put this on, I was like, ooh, I got a little, I got a little springtime happy. This was, this warmed my heart just as much as my um, litter did. So, okay, so now that I have these mixed, I'm going to add them onto here, but I'm going to show you what I did. So... Because I am, this is my piece and I'm using it on a sample board, let's pretend like in here is my, you know, 
the long inside and this is like the outside of the um, frame. So layers, 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 layers. So what we're going to do, and if I'm not careful and I drop my frame, I'm really gonna be upset with myself, so bear with me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is find my brush. Do you know where my brush is? Brush, brush. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do, or what I did, oh, another rule of thumb. Your tools, make sure, these are just like frames. What you purchase is what you get. So make sure you invest in good brushes. Um, they will become your BFFs like from childhood. You'll keep them forever and they will be there for you. Okay, so with this, we're going to add, so first I went and um, with my frame, I put in my black because I knew definitely this is where the primary color that I wanted. I wanted to get this on because I wasn't sure how much I wanted to put on, how much, you know, how far I wanted to go. So I went and we're gonna put our, now when we go to put this on, remember we want layers, we want texture. It doesn't have to be smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the imperfection is the perfection. Does that make sense? Or does that not make sense? Makes sense in my head. Anyway, so you go in and I just went and I put my um, milk paint on. Now, rule of thumb, remember when I said I didn't want too much water? I didn't want too much water because again, I'm coming over top of unsealed plaster. I didn't want to pull, if I had too much water on my brush or in my milk paint, it's going to pull um, the plaster underneath. So with that, I waited till that dried. We're just kind of kind of gonna go a little bit quicker um, to give you an idea. And if you give me a second, let me just blow this real fast. So I didn't want to. Now when you do this, remember I said like I don't really like using um, dryers. I usually let it dry overnight. There is a. Um, I do, sometimes I don't do that with like milk paint and I'll explain why. So when the milk paint dries, you will see, this is like really the only time I can sit and actually watch paint dry and find it enjoyable. Otherwise, it drives me crazy. But you can see how it starts to dry. So when that dried, I then went behind and I put in, I put on my yellow. The champagne yellow, like I said, is a really warm yellow. It's a really pretty color. I haven't used it before, and I was glad that I used it for this project. Okay, so remember, there's no rhyme or reason. You are just putting it on. You're getting somewhat a complete coverage, but you do not want to put too much because you don't want to pull your plaster. Now here's another thing. So with this project of pulling, because we're gonna want to pull this milk paint off, time isn't really on our side. You kind of wanna move quickly because if this does dry too much, you might have to pull a little bit more we might have to pull a little bit more when we try to go through and get this off because I, I let that sit overnight. But um, can you see like how when I said it kind of comes through with um, you'll pull the plaster off. See how it's a little bit too heavy handed? I pulled it off. That's okay. We'll just add some milk paint. It'll be one of those areas that we want the paint to come through. So when this finished, I let this dry. And when this was done, this is when I came and I put one of my layers and I came back and I put on my um, Sunday suppers with the Venetian brown. So I'm gonna just hit this a little bit so you can see how I put it on top. So I just kind of want to look at, you can kind of already see how it's already kind of started to dry. It does dry pretty quickly because the, um, plaster, like I said, is porous, so it's going to pull the milk paint in, so you've got to work quickly. 
the um, so it starts dry so you can see how what it dries down to so we're just going to kind of go a little bit quicker so you can see how I added the brown Did this I actually did this in this part in my kitchen and I used a um, hair dryer to dry my steps so if you can just bear with me I have some water to clean up my brush and we're gonna put the brown over top of the yellow again we're creating layers there's no um, there's really no wrong way to do this because I'm going to come back and I'm going to be pulling this off. So even though this is not fully dry, you know, you can kind of see this is what happens when you don't you let you don't let it fully dry. See how it mixes together? I mean, sometimes it can work in your favor, sometimes not, but for this project I waited to every, you know, until they were fully dried. But I don't want to take too much of your time tonight, so we're going to kind of work quickly. But, oh, and if you have any questions and you're just, you know, you're thinking, Chell, what the heck are you doing? Um, put any questions you have in the comments, and when we are done, I will definitely come back and um, answer any questions you have or make reason to what we're doing. So when this fully dries, this is what it looks like. So when we get to this, you can see, cause remember I said like, I didn't really, I mixed the milk paint, but I got most of the um, grain, you know, the grain out, but I did, sometimes when you do not, obviously you don't paint with um, the bubbles. However, sometimes when you get grain, if you don't mix it together all together, that well, I'm hoping you can see it. You might get like a spot of actually like the darker green. So um, this is actually gonna gonna work in our favor because we want, remember we want that texture, we want that, the shading. And so here comes like the fun part. With this, now you can use antiquing glaze or you can use water to help um, pull the milk paint off. Now, I just used uh, water because I didn't want to use antiquing, the antiquing glaze because sometimes the antiquing glaze will leave a antiquing color, like a, like a yellowy antiquing color uh, behind. And I didn't want that because of um, the step after this. So with this, I just took a small sponge and some water and I am praying to the dear Lord that I didn't let this dry too long and this will, I will be able to manipulate this but it might take a second. So I literally just went through and I put, you can see, I just put the water with the sponge haphazardly over my um over the milk paint so i gave it a second to for it to sink in and then i came back i didn't want to be too um heavy with my pulling off but as you can see coming back through the water is pulling the paint off. Here we're gonna get the texture. We're gonna get some wet, what looks like wear, some age, and create that antique old 
or a look. So number number two, when you are removing the paint, um, make sure you work in sections. So, you know, this, you know, pulling this, you know, you're going to use this as a negative tool to pull the paint off. If you're not paying attention and like if you have some of the brown or some of the black on your uh, sponge, you and you go over, you know, you're going to go and then it'll end up being a positive tool and it's going to point, you know, brown or black in your other areas. So just make sure um, you're staying in your lane and um, making your heart happy with something you are really going to enjoy. So as you can see, I'm getting that, I have to be honest with you, I can't, I hope it's not my lighting because it, it looks good down here, but from what I can see, you might be thinking, sweet mother, but I promise. So can you see here, like you can see like the nooks and the crannies and the, the wear, it looks old, right? Yeah, it's not, look, it's Amazon, love it. Okay, so these products are never gonna go through and I'm going to make sure that I have all the brown off. And I'm going to come back through. Now I'm going to go over just the black. Now, do you have to remember that the black is only one layer. You have the black, then you have the plaster, and then you have, you know, um, the one step. So you definitely don't want to be as um, heavy because you don't want to pull too much off because then you're going to go down your layers and you're going to be back to square one. So, I'm not getting the black to come off. You can just bear with me. So this is another thing. When you let milk paint really dry and you want to then come back and take it off, it's starting to come off. You do then, you really have to um, manipulate it. So that's what I said, time is of the essence when you do this because um, you might not get the look you want. So coming through, we're pulling it off and it's not coming off. Let me, so here's another thing. When something doesn't work, switch up your tools. So if I need another negative tool, I'm going to use a dry paper towel. And because this is somewhat coarse, it will Okay. So there it goes. All right, so now, yeah, there we go. Now we can start to see the plaster. So the plaster underneath, I wanted to have the white pop through, but at the same time, the plaster is creating, it's creating that texture that I truly love. Okay, so once this um, dries, I then have the next step. So let's say that this is what we were looking for. We come through, and now we want to make sure that this is fully dry. And again, with the milk paint, thankfully you can see as it starts to dry. And once it dries, you can then actually see You can see um, my yellow, so here's my uh, Sunday suppers. Here is my champagne yellow. Here's my plaster. Here's my layers that I wanted to see. So, and then if you look through the black, you can see the white. Yeah, that's my plaster. But then here underneath is my one step. So once this fully dries, and let's pretend it's fully dry. What I did next, 
I sat here and I thought, hmm, how can I age this? How can I make this look a little bit older than what it is? And one of my favorite go-to is glaze. I love glazes because one, it can seal your project, and number two, it can also add a little bit of pop of color. So with that, I used the glaze over and I came back and I added glazed over with a tiny bit of my Java. So whenever I do projects, I always make sure that I use um, the same colors back to make sure to make it uniform. So here is my glaze that I left from the other day. And as you can see, it is When you add the, um, I just added a little bit of paint to um, tint the glaze. And as you can see, it looks like it's a little bit watery. But the glaze is actually going to help seal our piece. So with that, but then again, remember, you, you don't want to pull too much. You want to be light-handed. And you're literally going to come over and you are going to put this glaze all over. And again, you're probably thinking, Chow, what are you doing? You look like a toddler in the kitchen trying to make breakfast. You're making a mess. I promise you I'm not. This is going to come out. And we are going to get a grungy old world look. So once we get this glaze on, we are then, we're just going to let it sit just for a little bit. Uh, you know how like when you use your, um, when you use your wax, you kind of sometimes, you know, wait till it comes to tack or when you do building, you wait till it comes to tack before you go and manipulate it. Well, we're kind of going to do this, kind of do the same thing here. We're not kind of really waiting for it to come to tack, but we're going to let this dry a little bit. So with that, I'm not going to use the heat gun. Because if you can see the glaze in some of the areas, see how it looks like it's dry? You just saw me paint over this. So it's going into the milk paint. So with that, what I did is I once again took my handy dandy sponge, little sea sponge, and now I'm going to come back and just like you do um, with the antiquing gel, we're gonna come back and we're gonna we're gonna remove some of the glaze. We're just gonna pounce around to create some texture, to create a antique look. So once again, remember if your sponge, like I just took it out of the water, make sure that it really doesn't have any water inside. You don't want it to be saturated. You want to make sure that you get all of the water out. But as you see, you know, we're starting to get like that uh, champagne yellow now looks like an antique yellow as the glaze goes into those nooks and crannies. So here we'll just kind of go back on this side over here because again we don't want to uh, mix our colors. You're using your sponge as a negative tool to pull some of that glaze off and when you pull the glaze off you know you're also you're going to pull some of the milk paint off and watch. I want to show you if you can see it can you see in here? Can you see the texture? Can you see the little ridges? It, it looks old, right? It looks like antique. That's the look we're looking for. So we kind of want to get that same process through the whole, the whole frame. And so now I'll go back over the black. So with the black, you know, we just took a brown glaze to put over top. 
my black isn't necessarily now going to be black in every area. You're going to see, like you will see some black, but then you're going to see the glaze, which will kind of look like wear. And that's what I'm looking for. So once, you know, I did my best Karate Kid, paint on, paint off, paint on, paint off. And I got to what I, because I will be honest with you, when I did my frame, bear with me. I don't want to make a mess because I don't want to mess up my frame. When I did my frame, even though I did this real quick, my frame wasn't as quick because I'm not done showing you the process yet. But when I did the frame, can you see how I got down into where there are, I got all the way down to, um, Oh my gosh, I'm having a brain fart. The plaster, you know, sometimes I was a little too heavy handed and I pulled off too much black. And I was like, shoot. So I had to go back with, you know, my milk paint and just take my brush and just kind of dab in some spots. So I didn't have as big of a, I guess you could say like a hole. But never, you know, never threat when you think, oh my gosh, I took too much off. What did I do? Um, you, you know, you can always add more. If the piece is not sealed, you can take stuff off. You can add more. You still have time. So that's the good part about these products. So with that, so here you can see how I got down to what I really, you know, liked. I went all the way down, pulling it off. I went through and I got to, um, I got all the way down to the one step. And um, you're probably thinking, Chell, I see some gilding there. What's going on? Like I told you in the beginning, parts of this, you know, it just kind of changed as I went on. So when I got to, um, once I finished and I had the glaze on, I'm like, you know what? It needs something. And so I just did a little bit of gilding, which I'll show you on the frame. Um, just kind of like to make a pop, to make a pop, to make it just a little bit softer. So this is the sample find a part like so you can see like I went all the way through you can see my um, champagne yellow you can see the um, oh my gosh it's Sunday suppers and then you know and like here's my black you can see my plaster but then at the same time I don't know if you can see it with the light like in here you can see the glaze so it's like it's one big happy family of colors so with that this is what, this was my, sorry, I don't want anything to happen, Judge, because I'm keeping this forever, and it's going in my living room. So when I finished, this was my final look, as you can see. So I sat here, and what I first did, you know, I had, you know, just this look, right? And I thought, you know, it needs something. So in here, I went and I put a little bit of gilding. And when I, if you look, I'm talking tiny, tiny like a mouse, like so tiny um, along the edges to make, make it pop. And once I put the gold on, you know, I put a little bit and I took my, I took my steel wool, my, my, um, and I went across and I just lightly went across and just to take it off. Cause again, none of this is perfect. The whole part, the whole perfect part of all of this is mom's letter. So all of this, the reason why I came up with this was because, you know, the struggle that she went through, it was like so, you know, it was so hard. I can't even imagine. All of this and like my crumbled um, tissue, it's, you know, like what she went through. And in it all, in through it all, in the middle, it's still my mom. The woman, you know, of love and, oh, I'm not going to go there because I'm not going to start crying again. So, but when I put the gold on, you know, I was like, I'm not done. This isn't done. So then what did I do? I went and I got my copper leaf and I put this, put the copper leaf on this edge. And again, if you see, it's not perfect. I, you know, I took my steel wool and I went across and I pulled, I wanted some of that plaster to come through. And then once I got that um, copper on, I thought, that's it. I was like, I am done. So as you can see, I went through and I put, you know, I painted my, my Java all over this. 
and I even like went on the edges. And then once I did that, I went and then I put on the plaster. And as you can see, I still have like chunks of plaster, but you know, it's smooth. So I went across all the edges and I put plaster everywhere. And I did, you know, that same outside part that I put the champagne yellow, the Sunday suppers, um, the Java glaze, and I pulled it off. And in the middle is just the plaster, or the one step, the plaster, the black, and the glaze. And that's it. There is no, you know, this isn't coloring by numbers. Any way you want, it's going to be perfect. So, um, that's it. And I, I have to tell you. So, this is something that is, um, if you have, I'm not going to keep you guys for too much longer. But, um, if you guys have these sentimental items, don't store them away. Put them out. Keep them out. And, um, you have those cards, you have those letters, you have those handwritten recipes. Display them. Why? It, you know, it's just like the fine china. Why do you put them away and only use them on special occasions? Keep them out. Because I'm keeping this one out because this is my mental booster. This is my mom still talking to me. And this is me still getting my way. Even if she might not like, like the old world, my mom might be like, oh, my mom was very, she loved like Victorian and the very gilded age and stuff. But me, I'm like the grungy old world tomboy. So this, so here's my mom. But this is me still getting my way. Don't tell her. But anyway, so um, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm sorry if um, I sounded a little tongue-tied. Something that's close to my heart, and if I get a little sentimental, you know, the waterworks start. But um, if you have any questions or anything else, you know, if you, leave them in the comments. I will definitely come back around and answer any questions. I will make sure to post, like, some pictures of close-ups so you can see exactly what I did. And um, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful uh, weekend. Uh, have a wonderful Valentine's Day, Hallmark Day, whatever you want to call it. And... Um, Hopefully I'll see you next month. So thanks for hanging out with me and my mom. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.